What's up, Raptors fans? Welcome to the Warriors Report. It's time to talk about Gary Trent Jr. because he is being linked to the Golden State Warriors. So for today's video, I'm going to be discussing some player personnel, why the Raptors could look to acquire those players, as well as talk about salaries. So I'm going to give you a couple of hypothetical trades as well. So if you're ready to watch this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well. We're super close to 4,000 subscribers. Your support would be very much appreciated. So with that being said, let's get into today's video. Now, I want to say this right off the bat, guys. There's actually no legitimate rumor linking Gary Trent Jr. to the Golden State Warriors. I want to say this right off the bat because in this article that was stated by Sean Daphne, by, uh, excuse me, at heavy.com, it was pretty much just linking a bunch of names. As you go through this article, it's pretty much just saying the likes of Toronto's Gary Trent Jr., Utah's Malik Beasley, or Memphis's Dylan Brooks, and essentially throwing out a bunch of names from the Golden State Warriors that they could look to package to obviously help them. The Warriors have been struggling a little bit, and it's going to be fun talking about trades, obviously, because it's a long season. It gives us fans something to talk about. So I'm going to be looking at a couple players, their salaries. I'm going to quickly go through the players as well and talk about which players make sense for the Toronto Raptors. Now let's start with Dante DiVincenzo. This was actually a player I wanted the Raptors to sign during the offseason. The reason being was because... Although he's listed at 6'4", he's a little bit undersized, 25 years old, he's making $4.5 million. The reason I wanted the Raptors to sign him was because he provides three-point shooting, but he also provides defense. Now, that's a huge thing because when you take a look at Raptors' previous signing, guys like Matt Thomas, Lima Luke, the issue with those players were they were great three-point shooters, but not defenders. Dante, Dante DiVincenzo gives you both. So also take into consideration that the Raptors have a lack a little bit of depth at the shooting guard position. Although he's a little bit undersized, I think he could definitely be a player you can have come off the bench, provide some good solid minutes and relief guys like Fred Van Vliet. And one of the bigger issues I want to talk about is their defense and guarding guys like Tyrese Maxey. The Raptors we've seen time and time again, they have a lot of trouble with shorter Quicker point guards slash shooting guards like that. And that's where Dante DiVincenzo comes in. He's a really speedy defender. He can exert all his energy on the defensive side because he's not someone who's going to be playing 40 minutes anyways. So have him come off the bench. Have him in certain matchups like that. And again, like I said, he can provide some three-point shooting space to floor for guys like Pascal and Scotty. So it makes a lot of sense for Dante DiVincenzo. Now, let's talk about some other guys as well. Now, Moses Moody, Jonathan Comenda, this is absolutely a no-brainer. Two young players drafted in the same draft class as Scotty Barnes. And in fact, the Raptors were actually scouting these two players in particular. And it was rumored that the Raptors were really high on Jonathan Kaminga in particular. Let's start with him. He's 20 years old, 6'8", $5.7 million is a very reasonable contract. And he's still on contract for three more seasons, and then it's a team option. So you have him under control for a while. And same thing with Moses Moody. Young player, 20 years old, 6'6", $3.7 million. Now his ceiling may not be as high as Jonathan Kaminga, but he could be a really solid role player in this league for years to come. And he's a three-point specialist as well. So I can, these two players are in particular make a lot of sense for the Raptors because not only were the Raptors scouting them, there are very young players who have a really high ceiling again. So again, not, not to disrespect Gary Trent Jr., but when you take a look at the Raptors, I mean, they can only commit so much money to the starting five. So that's going to be, it gives you a little bit more cap flexibility. I think that's what makes a lot of sense for the Raptors. And obviously talking about James Wiseman, 21 years old, seven feet, 9.6 million is a lot. Again, top three pick. I know there's going to be a lot of controversy saying he's a bust. He's this guy's. And a lot of fans are going to state that we have Christian Coloco. We have Precious at you. Well, we don't need another center. I will say one thing. You can never have enough competition. As much as I like Christian Coloco, what if his ceiling is a Bismack Biombo? Let's again, for example, I'm not saying he's going to be, but let's say his lowest ceiling is Bismack Biombo. That's a shot blocker. He's obviously taller with a little bit more versatility on the defensive side. So again, it never hurts to have good competition in the roster. I mean, having two centers that are seven feet, let James Wiseman and Jonathan, or excuse me, not Jonathan Kaminga, but Christian Coloco go at it in practice. It'll make both of those players better. And if there's ever a team out there that can work with the injury-prone players, again, 21 years old, if centers normally do take a while to develop as well, they could unlock James Wiseman's potential. Okay, so I've given you my um, thoughts on these four players. Let's talk about hypothetical trades. I'm going to go into my first trade here. Now, obviously, realistically speaking, the Raptors would obviously could ask for a lot, but the realistic, I want to start with the most realistic trade that is James, or excuse me, not James Wiseman and Moses Moody for Gary Trent Jr. Now, Gary Trent Jr. is making about 17.2 million, whereas those two players combined make about 13.3 million. And if I'm correct, I think that should work out salary purposes wise. I think the Raptors have a little bit of leeway in salary cap space, which would allow this trade through process. Now, again, this is probably the 
safest trade for the Warriors, not for the Raptors, for the Warriors. So I think if the Raptors do do this trade, they possibly look to acquire, again, I'm being greedy here, a possible first future first round pick, obviously lottery protected, or something along with the lines of a couple of second round draft picks, just because in case James Wiseman ends up being a bust, again, I'm saying if, that's a big if, Moses Moody is essentially just a really good role player, and you don't know if he's going to become as good as Gary Trent Jr. So just for insurance purposes, I think at the very least, you should at least try to acquire first-round draft pick, and obviously the Warriors get Gary Trent Jr. Now moving on to our second trade here, this would be absolutely ideal for the Raptors. If Masai Ujiri is ever to pull off a steal, this would be it. Jonathan Kamenga, James Wiseman for Gary Trent Jr. No picks involved, no Dante DiVincenzo. Just these two players. Now, obviously, Jonathan Kaminga is so raw, but his potential is absolutely unreal. I can't imagine the Raptors roster with Scotty Barnes and Jonathan Kaminga. Now, obviously, those two players are both developing offensively in terms of shooting-wise. Jonathan Kaminga is still a little bit more raw, but it would be a pleasure to have these guys play defense together. It would be so much fun. And again, obviously, James Wiseman, that center that you could potentially unlock here. The Warriors obviously get Gary Trent Jr. Now, I do want to mention one thing before people are quick to point out that the Warriors would not do this trade. Now, the reason being is because Steve Kerr did come out, I believe, a day or so ago stating that it's unfortunate for a lot of the young guys because the Warriors are in a state where they're ready to win and they can't unfortunately let a lot of these young guys work through some of their mistakes, which he did say, again, it's very unfortunate. So if that's the case, maybe the Warriors look to move on from some of these guys. Now, obviously, again, this is... More so being maybe a biased Raptors fan, hoping that Jonathan Kaminga comes back with James Wiseman. But this would be ideal for the Toronto Raptors for several reasons. But I do want to hear your thoughts. What are your thoughts on this trade? Make sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. But I do want to end my video on one note, guys. Before people say Gary Trent Jr. isn't going anywhere, I do want to mention a few things and why I truly believe the Raptors will move on from him. Reason number one is the Raptors didn't want to pay Norman Powell that money a couple of seasons ago. Again, obviously Norman Powell is older, but he's a good bench player. The Raptors didn't want to pay him $20, $18 million. $18 million is what he got from the Portland Trail Blazers, but still that's a decent amount of money for a role player. Now think back a couple or think a few years later, now with Gary Trent Jr., do the Raptors really want to pay him anywhere from $22 to $27 million? Absolutely not. And to throw into the fact that he is which clutch sports, which is an agency that's been a little iffy i'm being completely honest i know oj Nobi is also signed with that agency but oj Nobi is just his own personality plus he was drafted by the raptors so i think that's a completely different scenario but gary Trin jr clutch sports and again i don't know i don't know i'm really iffy about this and also taking into consideration the masayu jury has gone on about two or three interviews addressing the team and hasn't mentioned gary Trin jr once what does that tell you i think the raptors definitely look to move on from gary Trin jr and they're going to get a lot of attractive offers, taking into consideration that, I mean, I know he's not averaging 20 points, but if you look around the league, 24 years old, averaging 20 points, there's very few guys. Obviously, there's guys like Cade, there's other guys out there, Jalen Green, but there's very few guys like Gary Trent Jr. who have been in the longest league in the longest, uh, long as he has, and averaging about 20 points, he can shoot three-pointers, instant offense. So obviously, I mean, the Warriors could be interested in him, but so can about 10, 15 other teams. Again, I will end my video on this note that when Norman Powell, before he got traded, it was rumors there, there were about 15, 16 teams calling for Norman Powell. Again, this is a much older player who was performing just as well as Gary Trent Jr. Jerry, Gary Trent Jr. is younger. So that potential, you could use that in a trade talks that you could say he's a little bit younger. He has potential and you could potentially look to acquire more. So that's why I think the Raptors will trade him. But I do want to hear your thoughts. What are your thoughts on these rumors? I know they're silly. They're fun to talk about, guys. But do you think Gary Trent Jr. potentially gets moved before the NBA trade deadline? And also taking into consideration by doing these potential trades with the Warriors, this allows a little bit more stability in the Raptors starting five. Reason being is because the Raptors can move Ojin and Obi at the shooting guard, move Scotty Barnes at the small forward, Pascal once he comes back to the power forward, and insert Christian Coloco or even Precious Achua into the starting lineup. Again, you can't have five starters in your starting lineup that all want to take shots. So this creates a little bit more stability in terms of Christian Coloco is not going to be demanding shots. So it helps Scotty Barnes with this development. It helps Ojin Nanobi take that next step, which we have been seeing in the last few games, help him become a little bit more polished offensive player. And obviously Pascal is Pascal and Fred's Fred. So we know what they're going to do. So again, those are my thoughts on Gary Trent Jr. But I do want to hear your thoughts. Make sure to leave your comments 
down below. And with that being said, guys, I do actually have a trivia question for you today. And that trivia question is, who is the youngest player on the Toronto Raptors? Is it A, Delano Batin? Is it B, Scotty Barnes? Is it C, Christian Coloco? Or is it D, Ron Harper Jr.? And no, my computer isn't working. I still can't screenshot. I can uh, make the screen a little bit bigger and show you um, displays like this, guys. But um, I do want to hear your thoughts. And let me know your thoughts down in below. And again, whoever answers this trivia question correctly first gets a shout out in my next video. So that will be it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm losing my voice here. And I hope you guys have yourselves a great day.